Um, I haven't spoken at DEF CON in quite a while, so I'm kind of excited to be here. I'm glad that we're in this room and not one of those other big ones. Um, how many of you have made badges before? How many of you ha have used badges before? How many of you like badges? How many of you like badges that work? How many of you have badges that work? How many of you have badges that don't work? If, like, not necessarily this conference, but have ever been at a conference you get a badge and it doesn't work? Yeah, me too. Um, how many of you didn't even bother turning it on because you weren't sure it was going to work anyway? So um, the point of this talk is because I um, have made a few badges and um, I have a habit of reusing as much as absolutely possible because the chief virtue of an engineer is laziness, right? So if I'm going to put the effort into making a badge that I can reuse, I want to make sure other people know that it's available and they can do that too. I know there's tons of badges, but like, and many of them are open hardware, open source. Um, and rather than, of course, you know, just taking an existing open source one, I figured, why not do another open source one? Because, you know, it will. so uh, that's how it goes. So I'm going to tell you about an open hardware badge design that I've worked on um, and that I think will be useful because it's been tested, been through two conferences already, it's going to be on track for a third one. Um, and I want it to be open hardware so that anybody who wants to make a badge doesn't have to start from scratch. You can just take this open hardware, change it how you want, however you want to do. Just change the artwork, you could change software, you could keep it exactly the same, just like change the conference name, um, and you've got a badge. So a little bit about badges, or me, I'm Joe, hi. Um, I teach classes on hardware hacking, reverse engineering. Um, I've been in Las Vegas for a week already because I was doing training at Black Hat, so I'm a little bit exhausted. But uh, after this, I'm going to go hang around the pool, which is what I've been looking forward to for the past week. Um, uh, yeah, I do hardware stuff. Um, so. Let's talk about, this is what we're going to talk about today, why we have badges, what this thing is that I'm talking about, what my vision for it is, what we can do today, um, and some logis logistics and pitfalls. Um, and, you know, it started out as kind of like a workshoppy thing, but the, the, the space and the venue worked better for us to do kind of more of a talk slash demo. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit, and then I'm going to show you some software and hardware, um, and then uh, we'll have some time for questions. Sound good? Any questions? Everybody ready? Okay, listen carefully. What are badges? Why do we have badges? Pretty much access. Like whether it's a wristband or a badge or something hangs around your neck or something you tattoo on your forehead, we need a way to know who's supposed to be here, who's not, who paid, who didn't, who gets you know free drinks and who doesn't. Um, so we're gonna have them anyway. We might as well make use for them. So we want the cool factor. This is a handful of badges that I designed. Uh, my first one over here was for B sides Portland ten years ago. Um, it was a bus pirate, but the PCB shape was changed, so it was the state shape of a Nyan cat. So the ribbon, rainbow ribbon cables that come out of the bus pirate were like the, 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 the trail of rainbow behind it. Um, and a couple of these were besides Portland, um, some 503 party badges, 44Con um, in London, TRCon, which was kind of evolved into, into uh, the Dan Initiative now. Um, so yeah, uh, they look cool. And you want them to look cool. And as a conference organizer, you want people to say, oh, this is a cool badge, take pictures of it, post it on social media, say, I can't wait till I come back next year, and then conference are going to get more people coming and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, why else do we want badges? Electronic badges hopefully, like, have some sort of interaction. And you can, do, you can do interaction with a paper badge, but electronic badges kind of are a little bit cooler. Um, so this is a few years ago, uh, Joe Grand's previous DEF CON badge um, was a little, like, magic tokens, they had uh, a piece of stone on the front, and he used a, a type of uh, NFC, not like standard NFC, but like a near field communication, inductive communication method, which is pretty cool. But what happens, people go around, they go up to people they don't know, they interact with the badge, they meet people, um, that's kind of like the, the best part about an electronic badge. Um, and also, like hopefully there's a lot, how many of you have ever designed a PCB before? How many of you have ever written embedded microcontroller code before, right? How many of you have hacked on a badge, an electronic badge? So hopefully the badge is an opportunity for you to get your hands on some hardware that you might not have otherwise done. So um, this one required a, a, a somewhat pricey uh, programmer, but like once you had that, you could do whatever you want. There was also a serial port that you could interact with it. But like getting people to interact with tools and learn something is kind of a, a great goal. So why open taxes? Um, so I. Anybody know what a badger is? The American badger, uh, Taxidea taxis. So this is the this is the open badge, open badger, open taxis. Um, not tax is like you know things you pay. Not tax ass the the big state, but like taxes. 
Um, and at some point, I'm going to have a cool logo, and it's going to be like a badger with a badge on that says open taxes. But you can just visualize that right now. Um, or you know, go, at, go ask Dolly to make that during the talk, and we can post it up there. You can do a pull request. Um, so it's open, right? This is the URL right now, open taxes. Um, and that is kind of like the sanitized, cleaned up version that has like all the strings for specific events and all the, the logos and stuff removed. So you can go and like copy this and make it and not have to worry about like infringing on anyone's artwork, copyright, or all these detailed crappy things. Um, so yeah, um, I'll put this URL up later, but I think it's the only thing on GitHub called Open Taxes right now. So it's custom, right? Off the shelf is kind of cool, like if you have something interesting, but there's really not a lot of off the shelf options. The one, one cool one we did a few years ago for B-Sides, uh, for uh, 503, DC 503's badge was we had uh, these little devices, they were uh, like this big, they were uh, smart response things, so they're made for classrooms where you like, you answer questions, the teacher pops up on the screen. But we took them, we reflashed the firmware with a, a couple games and used that as our badge. So we, we didn't design hardware, we just took pre-made hardware and, and programmed it, which is kind of cool. But this is the process, I mean, we've, we, we go through prototyping phases, we, you know, uh, have an actual badge, and then like we have a second iteration, this is B-Side San Francisco's badge, which is essentially the same hardware. But, you know, like, two, two conferences, two badges, somewhat similar, but it's okay, because there's a lot of conferences and there's a lot of badges. Um, so open, custom, and we also want it to be cheap. Um, uh, my objective is that, like, there's a lot of change in the microcontroller world lately. Um, this uses the RP2040, um, which is the predecessor to the fancy chip that on, is on a DEF CON badge. It's amazing because it's dirt cheap. In quantity, it's like 60 cents, and that includes, like, uh, USB interface. So like, there's a lot of extra chips you need sometimes to interface with a badge easily, um, and this doesn't need them, so it is extra cheap. Um, something else I've learned is when you get stuff assembled overseas, you know, if you go to a, a manufacturer that like does a lot of it, you know, if you wanted to assemble 100 badges, you need 100 chips. You buy those chips, you get the 100 chip price. If you go and get them assembled and you get 100 assembled, uh, badges assembled, they get the chips at the 1,000 or 10,000 or real price. Right, real R E E L, um, which is also the R E A L price that you know manufacturers get to pay, and so I've actually found that like for prototyping, it's cheaper for me to get a prototype assembled than it is for me to get the PCBs and buy the parts and assemble it myself, which is kind of a weird world we're in. Um, so yeah, right now this this is the last iteration. These were um, uh, five dollars and seventy cents each, plus some uh, engineering costs, um, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, Six dollars for a hardware badge that interacts is kind of a, a nice target. I was aiming for five. Actually, I started aiming for ten, and then I went and did some cost reduction and managed to swap out some cheaper components and got it down to almost five. So, long run, five is the goal. Oops. Uh, cancel. Cancel. Um, apologies for the AV situation. It's a little bit interesting. Um, so. I want to encourage interaction, so a badge has to have a way to communicate. However, we're hackers, we're privacy-minded people, we don't want these things broadcasting all the time, right? So um, what I opted for was infrared communication. What I like about infrared is that you can make it pretty short range, right? You can have it only work when you need it to work, and you can, like, you know, not use it if you don't want to. So this device has a little IR LED, right, right here and an IR receiver right here. So when you line badges up, they like kind of flash lights at each other. Um, and uh, yeah, bill of material costs for the communication on this badge, eight cents. Um, so compare that to like an antenna, which is gonna be more than eight cents or uh, yeah, anything else. So I thought that was kind of awesome uh, that I was able to get it that cheap. Uh, Braden Lane, he's done like e-challenge coins, he actually design this uh, IR circuit and I asked him for schematic and parts and he shared it with me so you know I appreciate his contribution to this because like yeah he was in the same boat he wanted IR communications but he wanted it to be cheap I literally just got my DEFCON badge of, like an hour ago so I haven't poked at this infrared communication so I don't know what it is whether it's modulated but what this does is it basically speak it's a UART connection you know what UART is serial connection and like nothing fancy, just spit that UART over an LED and it goes up and down, none of the modulation, no extra transceivers. And in the other end, you just have to do a little bit of cleanup. Downside, it's wicked slow. Upside, it's dirt cheap. Trade-offs. Um, 
So um, I want to encourage learning and um, the original idea for this badge came from um, uh, B, B Love, uh, Brandon Levine, and he wanted to do uh, something in CircuitPython because he was not an embedded programmer, but he knew Python. I had never used CircuitPython before, and so I was introduced. At first, I was like, uh, yeah, that's a little high overhead for an embedded system. We're going to do like C, and we're going to maybe do some hand coded assembly. But that's because I started doing microcontrollers 20 years ago when that's the way to do it. I, uh, 25, 30 years ago when you, know, you had to pay for a compiler. Um, and then, you know, I kind of did work for a while and then when I left work it's like, oh, I can play electronics for fun and Arduino happens, right? So now we could plug things in with a USB cable, download one thing, get our compiler and all our tools and that was great. But now CircuitPython, you don't need a compiler, you don't need anything, you just plug in a USB cable, you have a, U a USB flash drive that shows up and there's a code.py file and you edit it and it runs, right? So your, your IDE is whatever text editor you want. And um, yeah, you don't have to download or install anything. I think it's amazing and wonderful. It does have trade-offs, but like objective here is something accessible, something that's get people playing with stuff. How many of you know Python? How many of you can hack your way through and like edit something in Python, even if you don't call yourself someone who knows Python? Well, how many of you have used CircuitPython or MicroPython on an embedded device? Okay, give it a try. I actually, so I've only got like 80 of these with me, but I'll give them out afterwards. And so if you feel like you wanna either tinker with this or think you might have interest in contributing anything to this project, I've got them for you. If you just want something to like hang on your neck, then like let people who want to work on them first, get them first, and then we'll have the rest available. Sound good? Um, so easy. Badges are not easy. Hardware is not easy. It's not called easy wear, okay? So it's hard. It's going to be difficult. You need to go through multiple revisions. And uh, yeah, so you should do that. Um, so here is, so actually the, the, the background story for this one, this is the LabsCon, 2023 LabsCon is a uh, threat intelligence conference down in Phoenix. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, it's very unique and niche. Um, but uh, I got home from DEF CON uh, at like August 16th or 15th or something. Like, I don't know when it was. And it's like, okay, we've got five weeks. We can do this. <laughs> um, and we did, right? So we've got the, the cardboard mock-up to kind of like figure out what we're going to do. We've got the little PCB mock-up. Uh, this is the IR communication circuit that I prototyped. I'm like, okay, I know I can get a RB2040 working. I can get an IR communication working. Um, I did a PCB layout and I milled a, a sample one. I didn't actually mill one, a functional prototype. I just kind of used it to make sure I got the sizes and placement right. Um, and then a uh, quick turn uh, prototyping from, I believe this one was JLC PCB. So for, I think these are like under 10 bucks each. Um, I ordered them on Monday, no, Sunday night, so Monday in China. I received them Friday. I was kind of like amazed. Of course, during that time, I did a like, you know, like little updating tweaks here and there, added some artwork. Um, but yeah, uh, and of course you see, you, you, you will make mistakes. So like you see here, I've got that little blue, uh, blue wire that happens to be black, um, cause oops. And uh, DRC is your friend. Um, Unless you're lazy, then you skip it, but whatever. Um, and actually, you can see up here, I had a pinout wrong for what I was using at the time, which was an IR transceiver. Um, and uh, yeah, so I had to uh, add that, change it a little bit. Screen goes on top. I like it because it hides all the components. Um, and that was, that was the prototype, and it worked, which was kind of amazing, just one blue wire and one component. So we cleaned up that component, um, got the PCBs made. So what I did at the same time is I did the bulk order from JLC PCB. Um, as well as like a small batch order. So what happened is I got the small batch prototypes a week later. You know, I ordered, I, so I received Friday, spent all weekend working on it, Monday ordered um, the second batch of uh, prototypes, I guess, thinking they're gonna be perfect and just work. Um, and those came the following Friday, which is, again is amazing. Um, and in the meantime, uh, finalized all the artwork and everything for the actual like production run. Uh, I did make a couple other tiny tweaks. Uh, turned out we got the production run in. Uh, took them two weeks, was kind of incredible for a few hundred badges. Um, and they shipped. And actually, we had room for a week of customs holdup on these badges um, because I was renovating my house. So we were living somewhere else. So uh, apparently, it was a unique address that I, may, I don't know, maybe customs just let stuff go to my home address and thought that this was a different address. So it's not Joe. I don't know. Um, that or they put too high a price on the uh, invoice. So, but
but that's the badge we got. Um, I did have to manually solder on the battery holders and the screens. That was a time constraint issue. I really am frustrated by screens. It's very difficult to get screens that are quality and reliable and consistent. So I use modules, right? You can get the modules cheaper than you can get the bare LCD uh, OLED displays. Um, so I might as well just use those, right? And uh, the second iteration, so we, we went from uh, this prototype for what was uh, LabsCon, and then B-Side San Francisco was looking for a badge, and I had a conversation which roped me into another project. And uh, so basically, the only change in the circuit had to do with the IR circuit. I took off that transceiver that was up here. That was a IRDA transceiver. It was uh, a $3 part. Um, it was there because I had it and tested it, and it worked. Um, and that's when I changed it to these eight cents of components, which were great. Um, so yeah, the prototype was pretty quick. The production badges um, took a little longer than expected. It's, I used a contract manufacturer that I use regularly for, for Tigerd. Shameless plug, Tigerd is a little orange PCB that does JTARG, UART, and SPY, and I make it and use it for my classes. Um, but apparently other people like it too, so you can get it on crowd supply. Um, so I had that manufacturer do it because I've worked with them in the past and they will do stuff like custom, silk, uh, custom solder mask color. And what they did for this badge, oops, do I not have a picture of it? Oh, no. So what they did for us for the um, B-Side San Francisco badges, we had two different uh, colors of silk screen. Uh, so they lined up perfectly. Actually, I wanna, I wanna do something silly. I'm gonna uh, modify my presentation on the fly. I'm gonna take a picture. Good, I don't see this on the screen yet, but. Uh, there we go. Can you see it? How come you can't see it? It's right there on the screen. Maybe I have to go back and forth. No? I see it right here on my slides. Oh, I'm very confused right now. I hope that you've been seeing the same thing as me all along because I'm, I'm literally looking at my slides right now and it's different from... Sorry. Do, 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 do. Oh well. Um, this badge is cool because it's got two different colors of silk screen so it was a, it's like a cream kind of off-white grayish solder mask and then a red and a black silk screen. And, you know, we'll talk about it in a second. The, the reason you pay for a contract manufacturer instead of a quick turn place is uh, they'll do things like make sure those colors line up perfectly, and they did an amazing job. I was better than I expected. What you have to realize is PCBs are like precision things, so like there is some effort to make things precise. Um, Silkscreen is kind of like the last thing, and it's usually only documentation. It's not like functional. So there's some more slop in the silkscreen than there is in the solder mask and metal layers. Anyway. Uh, afterwards, you can call, come up and see some of these badges because, yeah, there's a bunch here. You can ogle the, the artwork. Um, so what's my vision? Um, I mentioned before, like, I don't like doing this over again, uh, and people are frequently asking me for badges and others, and rather than, like, have to be involved, like, in the loop, it'd be really cool if I had a website. You go to the website, and you type in your conference name, right? You upload the logo for the concert, con con concert, concert, conference, um, and you click go, you get your board files, you get your bill of materials, get your code, everything ready to go. Does that sound cool? So what you can do then is instead of having to start from scratch and go through three iterations of prototypes and test everything and find the right components, you start with something that works and change what you want to. If you want to do uh, uh, like board changes and layout changes or add components, you do that. But you start with a board file that's functional and works, right? You want to make just artwork changes, you can do that, but you've already got a board that works. If you want to keep the hardware exactly the same and change the, the game that it plays or whatever, how it interacts, you can do that. Um, and that's actually what, besides Portland's going to likely use the same hardware, but they're going to have a completely different game that it plays. So, like, customize what you want to do and keep what you want to keep. Make sense? Again, chief virtue of an engineer is laziness. So be as lazy as you think is appropriate, and you'll be able to uh, spend your time doing the things you want to do. So how many of you like PCB design? How many of you like embedded software? So you can go like meet up with each other and like work together or like do one or the other. Make sense? Cool. 
So what can we do today? Because of the AV stuff, I'm gonna like finish my slides first, and then I'll flip over to my laptop and do some like walkthrough demo-y stuff. I'm not gonna build a badge from scratch because it's not there yet, but maybe someone will submit a pull request and we can do that. So um, what can we do today? If you are a hardware person, right, you can just change the logo, that's easy. Um, you can adjust the board footprint. Um, I, f I find like the cutout shape of the board is really a neat thing to customize a badge because it, it looks neat. Um, you can rearrange the layout. As it is right now, it's kind of ergonomically designed, right? I happen to be left-handed, right? But I wanted righties to be okay with it too, so I put the button in the middle so you, all you people can use it. Um, and uh, it also, it, it hangs down so you see the logo. And if you want to use it, okay. I still have power. Um, I'm going to keep talking. Um, you just like, you grab it and you point it at someone else and you like, you trade, right? Ergonomically, like they hold each other edge to edge. Screen's still, yeah, it is, just making sure the screen's still on. You hold them edge to edge and like they communicate. One of the flaws of the current design is uh, I need to tune the IR transmission a little more because you literally have to hold them together like that for them to communicate. Maybe like a half an inch, but if they're more like an inch or more, they don't work. Which is kind of good because then you're not transmitting and receiving noise and other people's stuff and whatever. Also, by using a module, the module kind of shades the IR stuff. So, like, you know, even if there's, if there happen to be lights, something crazy like that, um, you don't have some interference from that. Cool. If anybody's got any questions as I ramble on, please, yeah, what's up? Yeah, uh, this is, to, uh, hmm. Maybe we'll do that later. Sorry. <laughs> Unless there's another mic. Nah, okay. Sorry. I'll, I repeat your question if I could hear it, but I hear that more, and I don't think he's any ask, asking any questions about boards. So what can we do? We change the logo, uh, adjust the footprint, footprint. We can rearrange the layout. So if we wanted to, you know, have it wider or different layout, or if you really wanted to change the infrared to something else, you totally could do that. Um, and you can hack it to pieces. The way I did the, the layout, I'll show you when I look through a keycad, is I have a bundle that's the microcontroller, I have a bundle that's the power circuit, I have a bundle that's the, uh, what's it called? infrared circuits, so you can drag those blocks around and route those blocks together, or you can drag, drag every single little resistor and component together. So, if you're a software person, right, you could change strings, right, like you take the badge, instead of being open to access, you call it like B-sides, you know, Gallifrey or something like that, and uh, you know, you can change the game text. Right now the game it plays is kind of, ever, ever played Clue? Yeah? So in Clue you have like a deck of uh, 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 suspects, weapons, and locations, right? And you draw, you shuffle them, you draw one of each, and you put them in an envelope to the side, and then you deal the rest out to everyone, and in the process of the game, you're kind of like trying to figure out what everybody else has so you know what's missing, right? Same thing, what it does right now is it deals uh, one clue to each person, and uh, you know, you can trade those around, you meet people, it trades the handle that you put into the badge as well as your clue, and when you get them all but one, you know the solution, right? And there's, right now it's set up for eight games, but we won't go into the details of that. Um, besides, Portland's gonna do a slightly different uh, game as well. Um, you can change all the game text. Right now, for Besides San Francisco, the AI theme they used, so it was a bunch of like um, AI, it was a bunch of like uh, 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 like doomsday scenarios, and, a, and it was a bunch of fixes, and so like you'd randomly put those together, like, you know, T-800 saved, uh, you know, something from Whopper, or some weird thing like that. So, batch logistics, uh, this can be very interesting, right? Um, did I miss a slide there? Du, 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 du. No, I think I got it. Sorry. Um, so, who likes hand soldering? Who likes hand soldering 100 badges? Who likes hand soldering 1,000 badges? So, um, when I solder, uh, I design around 0603 surface mount components because I used to be able to see them and do it by hand. Um, I can't anymore, because I'm old. Um, and uh, so I use a microscope and I can still do them by hand. Um, but if you're going to do something, this is designed for mass manufacturing. This is not designed for hand soldering. Um, so I use 0402 components, the really tiny ones, um, which makes I can fit them all on there easily and they're small. And 0402 is a pretty reliable size, gets smaller than that, and sometimes you get a higher uh, failure rate. So if you're going to hand solder, uh, what I often do is I actually will get the prototypes with all the small components assembled, right? And then I get those prototypes and I solder on the big stuff. Um, for example, if I'm like trying to, you know, fine tune which microcontroller, or I get parts locally that I want to use. Um, next is small batch. This is like uh, JLC, PCB, PCB way, um, and others, uh, Macrofab in the United States. 
You just give them your design and tell them a little bit about the, the parts, and they'll make the PCBs, assemble them for you, and ship them to you, um, which is pretty cool. And like I said before, sometimes it's cheaper for me to do that than it is for me to just buy boards and buy parts and waste my time assembling, assembling them. Um, and then last is contract manufacturing. This is, you know, basically there's a, a weakening line between the small batch stuff and the contract manufacturing because a lot of the same companies do the same thing or outsource it to each other. Um, again, I have a contract manufacturer I've used for Tigerd um, and also Bitmagic is the logic analyzer. If you've heard of like uh, NETV or the FOMU, like mini FPGA, those were all done by the same folks. The reason why I choose, chose them is because they'll do custom, custom solder mask colors for me. So, yay. Um, but yeah, once you're hitting a threshold of uh, more than 100, you probably want to consider this. It will take you longer. It will cost more. But it's more likely to get it right the first time, which is really what you want to do. You know, 100 badges in a contract manufacturer with one mistake is 100 badges you need to rework. Um, and finally, flashing. Like, once we've got these badges, even if, like, we didn't change anything, we still have to provision them. Um, and so I've got, like, a flashing rig here, uh, which basically you slot the badges in. It pops into a USB port. And they're all connected to, like, a seven-port USB hub. And I've got a couple scripts in there that will go through, wait for a device to be attached, and flash it. There was a small bug in that, though, because what it does is it, it's a Linux script. And it goes, it says, OK, you've d attached the device. Let's mount it. What's the mount point? OK, and now we want to wipe it first. So RM, like, uh, what's it called? RM uh, mount point uh, slash star, uh, and then dash RF, right? Like, so you want to remove everything on that drive and force it, right? Which is great until mount point, uh, for some reason, doesn't exist. Like, you pulled it out before, like, you got the mount point, and so that string is blank. So it's RM dash RF, or RM star, uh, slash star dash RF, uh, which, or whatever the order of the, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was bad. Um, luckily, I was using a utility called pmount, which runs as a user, as opposed to having escalated privileges and running as, as root and mounting, because that would have been a much worse rm rf slash star. For those of you who are like more in the Windows world, that basically slash star is your root directory and everything on your system. So like it basically would hose your system if you did that. Um, yeah, that was that would, that could have been a lot worse. Luckily, it was discovered and found and fixed um, before we flashed all of our laptops instead of the badges. Um, flashing. We just talked about flashing. So common pitfalls. Uh, cool. We got about halfway in, um, which means I want about half the time to go and, and uh, either look at questions or um, walk through the, the designs. Um, common pitfalls. I'm really going to emphasize one, uh, schedule. Give yourself more time than you need. Once you've done that, give yourself even more time. Add some buffer for you know manufacturing issues. Add buffer for an extra prototype run. Add buffer for um, you know testing and software and flashing and whatever. Um, you'll use them. Um, you'll make good use of them, but you'll use them. Uh, and part of the idea here is like if you're starting with a known good badge, right? You can go get those started and get the badges manufactured and work on the software in parallel. And uh, then you don't have to worry about getting your hardware, testing it, making sure it works. You know, just remove the steps you don't want to have to deal with. Cool. So I'm going to go back, and for those of you who wanted, where did I put it? The URL. Uh, somewhere. I put a URL. It's GitHub. Forget it. I'm going to switch over to my laptop now. Um, I'll get that set up. I have some, some hardware design and code I can walk through. Um, if any of you have questions, just come on up here, and like you can ask a question, and I'll repeat it, and then answer it um, as I do the walkthrough. So let, give me a moment. I'll swap up. And 
first about two gig seconds. Anything? Uh, you connect straight to the TV. Do you already have a uh, I'm connected to this wire, which goes straight to the TV. It was just what I was on a second ago. Uh, you can see that this screenshot from uh, first device. Uh, Configuration your laptop. Uh, checking that. Looks good. 1080p. And, uh, I invite you to start this QR code if you want to read the wrong about What? Input one, I'm outputting to it right now. It's on uh, the internal Google TV right now. It's showing on Google TV. Well, that's not what I want to show you. But we know the TV works, so fingers crossed one more time. More and more. Thank you for your patience. Anything? No. Well, that's what I get for using Linux. So I'm going to try something, if we can get this back up on the screen. So let's see. No, no, we're good. We're good. Okay, we're doing it live. So where am I? Can I get a volunteer? Come on up. Do I just hold it and show my screen? Just hold it. Just hold it so we see the screen. Thanks. Okay. Everybody see that? I'll make it bigger. So, there's the slides. First, let's look at, um, let's see. Can you hear me good? First, let's look at the B-Side San Francisco board badge so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, we've got a schematic. I'm not going to go into the details of the schematic. We've got, uh, can you see anything at all? We've got the RP2040, right? We've got some flash. We've got some IO pins. We've got our IR circuit that, you know, just kind of works. And we've got a USB interface that works. USB-C, which is great, because everything should be USB-C. Um, but let's look also. So this is what the uh, finished badge looked like. Um, so uh, this is just in black, because that's what I usually do. But you see it uh, silk screen on the front, no components, makes it really easy to see, uh, you know, you get a little closer. Yeah, there we go. Um, makes it uh, easy to customize it, because we don't have to worry about stuff. There are a few holes, like through holes. That's where the battery connector is. That's where the USB connector is. And that's where the string goes on. But I tried to keep them near the edge to make it a little better. Um, one thing besides San Francisco does is they use stickers to differentiate their badge types, which is kind of cool. So if you really just wanted to, to fab this badge as is and just make stickers for your conference, like you can totally do that. Like You literally don't even need a logo when you go and order the boards. But what we've got here is the controller in the middle. Up here, we've got the Raspberry Pi 2040, some flash. Uh, an I two squeak uh, I squared C connector, so you can like attach things to it, and then yeah, IR circuits. So let's look at the layout. How many of you have used KiCad before? How many of you used any circuit board design software, CAD software? Um, so basically, it's a whole bunch of layers, right? And uh, you make a, a schematic, and then you make it into the layers of the the board, and you actually physically place stuff around. I had mentioned before we have oh I de I degrouped it. Uh, I have most of the things in groups, so like we can go and we can grab the, here, we got the IR, TX, and RX, so if you wanted to move that around, you can move this whole bundle at once instead of having to go and move every single component and lay it out. And we'll flip the board over, view, flip board view, 
Uh, oops. And then we'll, oh boy, the resolution is just kind of making this wild. Um, anyway, uh, what we see here, uh, footprint back, there we go. So that's the silk screen. That's the layer that we would want to, you know, we'll, we'll remove and replace. Um, if you wanted to see one example of what it looks like. Of course, you know, your boards are kind of like looking top down, so it gets uh, flipped and rotated a lot. Um, but yeah, that's what you do. Uh, next. Um, let's go over to, this is open taxes straight out of the uh, repository. The question before was what the URL is. Um, securely, uh, GitHub slash securely fits slash open taxes. But if you just search GitHub for open, ta open taxes, you should get it, T-A-X-U-S. Um, what's the difference here, right? There's none of the logos. My logo's not on there. The open hardware is on there. Um, the conference logo isn't on there. There is the URL, so we can see it. If take a picture if you want. I'll wait a second. Take a take a picture of the screen showing the tablets. Taking a picture of my laptop showing a device that happens to have the URL text rendered as an image. I mean, I think we need to do this anyway. I would take a picture with my phone right now, but I cracked the screen yesterday, so oops. Um, but yeah, you can see it's the same layout, same design, and besides Portland is literally going to use this exactly the same. Actually, that's not true. We're going to change R11 to a slightly different resistor value. Um, but we don't need to worry about that right now. So yeah, and then again, this is, looks, should look very similar. This is the, get it nice and close so we get the, the screen as the whole screen. There we go, perfect. So yeah, here is the board, um, black, black, blank on the back, and stuff on the front. Um, one thing I'll mention, uh, some people kind of uh, like to sh shortcut and sometimes, oh, you can see me in there too. Hi. Um, you try and shortcut and say, like, oh, well, you know, it's cheaper if we just get the, the plain boards. Um, and the default selection is uh, uh, HASL, uh, it's a leaded uh, kind of metal cover, so it makes it easier to solder on the copper. Um, but that's leaded. And if you're doing these badges and you're handing them out to people, don't use lead, okay? There are a lot of people who will be like, oh, yeah, I'm old school. I'm just going to use leaded solder because, you know, whatever. It tastes salty when you eat it, but too bad. Um, use unleaded. Like, it's, it exists for a reason, and especially if you're going to be handing this to people and kids, and they're going to hang it around their neck, and they'll show it their kids when they get home, and they'll put it in their mouth. Like, you may want to put a bitter on there just, you know, to make it like game cartridges, but, like, yeah, don't, don't use lead. Uh, figure it out, uh, get the equipment, and learn how. I use a uh, SAC 305 uh, solder, which is 3% silver and 0.5% some lead, tin, uh, no, not lead, tin, I don't know. But just do it, get practice doing it if you're a soldering person, because uh, it's the right thing to do for um, people who would otherwise get injured by lead. Anyway, uh, so let's look next. Uh, and actually, I'll, I'll skip over because it's a little more visual. This is the, uh, the dock, right? And so let me try and change it so you can see the dock better. Has anybody ever used OpenSCAD before? I love OpenSCAD because I'm like a console person, and uh, OpenSCAD is like CAD for console people. There we go. So here, uh, what do I do now? Oh, there's a button down here. No, that wasn't the wrong button. Uh, there we go. So uh, OpenSCAD lets you just basically draw boxes and spheres and all that stuff. And what you can see here is I've got, oh, why is it doing this? Um, I must have a sticky key or something. So we'll look at it sideways, right? I've got a groove for each of the badges to slot in there. Um, what I also have is it's par parametric. So we can change the badge size right here without having to worry. So if we change the PCB, it's pretty straightforward. I like to put the USB spot port in the middle, just makes it easy. Um, and if we wanted to do like a two two column version of it, not 23, uh, we can go do that, and bam, you've got two two columns, right? If we only wanted to do a double one, like uh, we can do uh, two columns and one row, yeah, bam, like just a, a skinny one, make sense? So um, I've got that up here. Um, so when I'm done talking, y'all can come up and take a peek at it. And uh, yeah, again, I, I got badges, so if you stick out all the way to the end and you're interested in like contributing something or even just want to try these things out, uh, come on up. I didn't bring batteries, I'm sorry. Um, and actually, now I'm realizing that there's something in my slides I forgot to mention, but I'll get back to that in a minute. The last thing I want to talk about is code. Um, it's all Python. Is anybody, 
anybody who's used Python, you look at this like, okay, we import stuff. We uh, I have a bunch of libraries that I use specifically for this game, and then it's 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 Python, right? Like we write Python code, and it actually works on hardware, and it's pretty awesome. The downsides of Python on embedded hardware is it sucks power. It uses a lot of battery, um, which is why I used AA batteries. Um, yeah, no, I'll go back to that later. Um, I use AA batteries uh, because they're cheap um, and because they have a battery holder that's inexpensive. You can tr ship them, you can transport them, you can take them through TSA. You don't have to worry about accidentally puncturing them and starting a fire. Um, so unless you really know what you're doing, stay away from lithium batteries on badges. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's not as bad as lead on PCBs, but I, I feel like, you know, we've got a badge here that was well done where they actually made an enclosure and protected the battery. Um, if you aren't enclosing your, your LiPos, then be extra super careful. Anyway, double A uh, battery. Actually, it started out with a double, a uh, triple A. I used a double A because it didn't uh, last very long the first time I did it. But then I've uh, added some power save features. Uh, somehow, I should be able to look down here. Um, right there, you, tiny, you can, maybe you can see it, is uh, some circuitry. And what this does is it takes the 5 volts in over USB and boosts, or sorry, the, uh, the 1.5 volts from the battery and boosts it up to 3.3, .3, which means you can use that battery all the way down to like 0.8 volts before the thing cuts out. So use your whole battery. Like I used a lot of coin cells in the past, um, which is great if you have a very small thing. If you're not running CircuitPython, 10 minutes, cool. Uh, let me like wrap this up and we'll chat. So yeah, uh, it's Python code. If you know Python, you can you know learn it pretty quickly. Um, CircuitPython is made by Adafruit. They made, they're a hobbyist electronics company based out of uh, New York. Um, and they make reference boards, development boards, uh, all sorts of stuff. So if you want to prototype something, actually that's where we started. We started with a bunch of Adafruit components, prototyped on like breadboards, and ended up here with a custom PCB. So, and the last thing I'm going to show you is, uh, uh, yeah, so skim through this. This is basically the provisioning. Let's, uh, not LSD. There we go. So this is the configuration. We've got a, a check.sh, which actually checks when you've got a solution. But the genfiles.py is what uh, basically generates all the files for the game. So down below, you can see we have like our, our strings, right? So our company options, Terrell Corporation, Year to Nine Propulsion, Whalen Utani. Our, um, the startup is Algafy, iTech, whatever. And the tool is uh, something else. And the, the string is, Blank company has just announced an intent to acquire a startup to build the entry's most advanced AI-powered tool, right? And that's the those that solution is randomly chosen and uh, comes out here. The way it does that is basically it goes through the options, randomly chooses one, generates a bunch of files that go on the badges, and then it signs the clues, right? And gives the public key out with RSA 512 because just enough to last you a day, right? Without someone wasting a few grand. Um, and uh, that'll let you make sure that people don't mess with your game by giving out fake clues, which could screw everything up. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, I've said all the things I think I wanted to say. If you've got some questions, come on up here. Um, and I can like, continue to talk to those out loud. But you can also come on up and grab some badges if you want. So yeah, go for it. Thank you. Thank you.